This is my system for laying out the valley rails so that you can spray glue them all at the same time. And if you notice, I've got every rail laid out so that I got about half inch, three quarters of an inch of cloth sticking out past the rail on all of them. Now when you spray glue, I'm using the spray Super 77. When you spray glue, see this is a side pocket. So you start from there, and you just come down like this and stop at the corner pocket bolt. So same thing here. That's a corner pocket, so stop at the bolt. Now that you got these two sprayed, you come over here to this one, same thing. Spray it, side pocket, so you come from there. Like that. Then you come around. And what this does is this allows equal drying of your spray glue as you're using it. See, now all six of them are spray glued at the top. Now, roll the rail over like this stand it up, make sure it's unstuck, and then slide it back about an eighth of an inch this way. Now it's the same thing, spray the bottom of it. When you turn it over, put it back where it was. Now I sprayed these first, so roll them, roll them again, scoot them back about an eighth of an inch, spray these bottoms. Right them bottoms. Now roll them back over to where they were in the first place. Okay. Repeat the process here. All right, now, the rails are spread to the top and bottom. Now we're gonna stick them. But before you stick the rails, make sure you stretch your rail cloth nice and tight. Let it relax. Roll the rail over. See there? Now, press it out. Take the bottom roll it over, set it aside. Take this one, roll it, come back, contact your cloth all the way across, roll it, bring it back, because we're not ready to stick the bottoms yet. Stretch your rail cloth, that helps keep the wrinkles, the puckers, out of the top and bottom of the rails when you go to staple the ends. There you go. Okay. Make sure to stretch your rail claw. Roll it. 
second. Hold on. Stretch, roll, and stick. Roll it over. Now, they've all had about the same gluing time. So now, when you bring the bottom over, take your rail in the middle, roll it over. Now, as you're working your way this way, pull your cloth this way in that direction towards the pocket. Now, this way, pull in that direction. There you go. That's a complete rail. So now, just leapfrog it over. Start in the middle again. See? Pull in this direction. Start pulling where you left off at. Make sure it's stuck. Make sure it's stuck. There. Now here we go again. See, I'm pretty uniform with the wrap over. There. Rails is 90% done now. Okay. Now, because I have carpal tunnel, and it makes it real hard for me to stretch the rail cloth because it's hard to hold the rail and stretch it at the same time. Now I'm going to show you how to close off the end of a corner pocket. See, with the rail being attached to the slate now, I can pull out my slack 
in the corner pocket. See here, I got it open to here. So when I bring this little cloth evenly, like this, pull it over, place your first staple in the center, close to your bolt. Now the top, stretch it this way a little bit, roll it over, one, two, three, four. Then when you do the bottom, turn on this side, See? And we got one, two, three, four. Now when you trim it off, trims like this. Yeah. Well, nice and neat. Side pocket. Pinch it at the top. Hold it together. Pull it down. Pull your slack out of the back. Roll it like this. Now these are pretty well wore out rail, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. Now, take this screwdriver. There. Now you got your fold nice and tight. Now, when you trim it, to finish stapling it, come in here at the top like this. Cut this inside corner out. Then in the bottom, cut that out. Now take this outer flap, fold it back like this. Now pull it nice and snug, put a staple right there, just like that. Now, cut all that out. Now, to close the side, one, two, three, nice and tight. nice and clean okay now I'm going to show you two different ways to close off the side pocket on a valley style table when you pull this from the inside and you hold this together and you fold it over like this and you bring it down and you tuck that fold back nice and tight look at your fold across here and then put two staples here. Okay. Now that you got that, this is method one. You want to cut out your excess cloth like this. And cut this pie here at the top like this. Now cut this out like that. Now that you've separated these two like this, this is method one. Hold this nice and tight. Place a staple right there. And you got it all nice and tight. Now you can cut all that excess out and your cloth is nice and tight. Now to close it off, pull the bottom over, 
like here. Staple. And then close the top down. Staple. Staple. Like this. Now, cut your excess cloth out. There. You're all nice and tight. This is nice and tight. Now I'm going to show you method two. Start out the same way. Fold like this. Bring it down. Bring your excess around. Nice and tight with your fold right there. Two staples. Now, go back here again. Split your claw. Cut the piece out up here at the top. Okay, now fold this back. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up like this. Okay, leave that folded over. Cut this excess out on the middle. Now, here, you want to pull the inside. See how it pulls that inside? See, it, it holds this fold nice and tight. So now, cut this out. So your fold is held nice and tight. Now, finish the bottom off the same way. Staple like this at this angle, and then two at the top. Cut out the excess. And again, your fold is nice and tight again. So now we're going to do the corner pocket again. And I'm going to show you two ways to do a corner pocket. First, get this, pull this out, stay centered. Fold it around, staple it your first T-nut. Okay, now roll it, pull it over the top like this. One, two, three, four, Again, the only reason I use clamps is I got carpal tunnel in my hands and it makes it hard to pull the cloth. So now, start at the end, fold it over. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, trim your excess off. Okay. So there you go. Completed rail. Okay, now, this method two for a corner pocket.
Now that you've got that, come in with your scissors, put a quarter inch back, cut, about a quarter inch back from the point, cut, split this in half. So you're like this. Now, pull over, one, two, fold this around and under, twist it nice and tight, like that. Now, get this out of the way. Start with your bottom, fold this back, curl it over. One, two, three, four. Now, trim out this excess cloth. like that. By getting rid of the inner cloth, we're actually removing a layer of cloth so that it doesn't pooch out as back back here, as much back here if you're using a thicker kind of cloth. We're removing the excess cloth so that when it bolts up, it bolts up flat instead of being pooched out. So there you go. Once you've laid your cloth out, First thing you gotta do is stretch your anchor side down to the bottom edge of the slate, hold it in place, stretch it. You keep holding it in place, don't let it spring up on its own. Flush to the bottom side of the slate. Make sure you take the slack out over here. That's the first thing you have to do. Now, I have a jig made up that the inside distance here is one and three eighths. This is one and three eighths, out here is one and a half. But inside is one and three eighths. And then you can see I've got 13 sixteenths and five eighths. These are the marks that you use for a full cut slate that the rail bolts go through the slate. Since this has shallower slate shelves, you line this up to the edge of the slate and this is the anchor side. So instead of the 13 16 for a full size slate, you go to the halfway point. Come over like this. Now here, that's your stretch line. You're gonna pull that line to the edge of the pocket. Same thing on this side. Line it up to the edge, halfway in between. Draw your line. That's how much slack you're gonna pull back into your pocket. On the stretch two side, five eighths would be normal for a full size slate. So half a five eighths, draw your line there. Half again, draw your line there. Okay, now, you take your jig, draw your stretch line. that's where you're gonna stretch the cloth over to. Okay. Now, you draw a stretch line at the end of your slate as well. Okay. 
today, you do the same thing at this end. Okay. Now, you need to know how far to hold over your cloth. So if you measure this, you got roughly seven and a half inches. So when you fold this over to the middle, like this. Now, we take seven and a half inches and subtract an inch and a half, we get six inches. So, here, you wanna come back and indicate where your six inches is at. Now this side, when you fold it over, you're gonna fold it over to that six inch mark, right like that. Reason being, the slate on this side where it's gonna stick out, this top edge of the slate is an inch and a half from your, your stretch mark. So right there's the slate, and it's three quarter inch slate, so it's about that wide. Then you got slate on this side, so this is slate right here. This is slate right here. And then with your three inch roller, when you lay out your glue, see here, you're gluing both sides simultaneously. So that you're putting the, the glue on both sides of the slate or the cloth at the same time so that you don't have to guess where it's at because rather than do one side at a time, we're gonna do the whole thing at once. Now, you got a stretch line here at the end that you've indicated. And to know where that stretch line is, we indicate where the end of the cloth is at the slate. See there? Now, this, is going to be right there, right there. See, this is your stretch line that's up here that you're gonna pull over and stick here. So that's there, and right there is the thickness of slate. So when we lay out our glue, as long as we stay inside of the line, which indicates the back end of the slate, the edge of the slate. And we stay on this side of this line. We know we're putting glue to match the end of the slate.
again. Right there is the edge of the slate stretched to here. So all we gotta do is make sure that we stay inside of this line when we lay our glue across. Okay, so we're ready to start gluing now. What you want to do is when you're loading your roller with glue, is pull away from your puddle of glue and spread it thin out here so that you're not carrying an excess amount of glue. Now that you got your roller laid with glue, just go ahead and go around and glue the thickness of the slate in the pockets. All the way around. Now that you got the outside surface edge of the, the thickness of the slate covered, come back and glue underneath the pocket shell where your flaps are going to stick. Now that you got that done, let's lay out your claw. Since we started gluing here first, this is the first end we want to start gluing with the cloth. Remember, get away from that puddle. Now, the idea here is to not press on the roller, but let it glide lightly. You're not trying to paint the glue on. That's all it takes right there. So as you continue on, you got a side pocket right there that has flaps that you need to make sure you got glue where the flaps are at. So that's what we're doing there. Okay, now we're gluing from this end. There. Okay, now that we've got that glued, we're going to glue the ends. So lay your cloth back out again, like this. Okay, 
But you got your cloth all laid out. Flip one end up like this. Flip the other end up like this. Pull away from your pile, just grabbing a little bit of glue at a time until your roller is completely covered, but not dripping saturated. Get the excess out here. Okay, now, starting here, you can see where the end of the glue was. That's the end of the slate. You can see my line comes over. So I'm staying inside the line. See where I just covered? Flare it for your pocket. Flare for the pocket. There, this side's ready. And down here. Okay. Into the glue, flare, it, starting at the end of the glue line, there you go, there. Now we've glued the cloth, we've glued the slate, they match together. Okay, now when we start sticking. Doesn't matter where I slide my cloth to, I got my reference points in the side pocket. So now come around this side. You see where my line is at? I line that up with the edge of the slate, and I take four or five inches and I stretch it, rub it out. And then I do the same thing over here line it up with the edge of the slate stretch it rub it out now when you stretch from there to here you don't want to stress your anchor point the cloth has a stop point when it runs out of elasticity so keep your hands hold here in two hands Stretch it until the cloth has no more elasticity in it. Then use your thumb, press it, stick. Keep your hand here. Now I can line up all the way down. Now rub it out like that. Now when you come up here, again, you only stretch till there's no more elasticity. <sighs> See, keep your hands there. Now, line your cloth up to the bottom of the slate, stick it. Now rub it. That bonds it the rest of the way. 
Now when you come on this side, you got all this excess cloth. Right now, don't stretch it past the edge of the slate. Line up that line, the edge of the pocket. There. Now, same thing here. Line up the line to the edge of the pocket. There, rub it out. Now when you come down here, see all this slack? Watch it go away. When you come down here, grab your cloth here, and here, two hand pull. You're pulling across and this way. Till there's no more elasticity. Palm, stick. Rub it out. See the line? Now, stretch this in. Palm stick. Now, so this slack is gone. Okay? Now come back, stretch, and stick. Stretch, stick. Do not stretch beyond your line, even though you can. Because if you do that, you're gonna take away from being able to stretch your ends, which is when you stretch the ends, it tries to stretch the side to side again. So if you don't go past your stretch lines, then you can balance your, you can increase your side to side stretch when you stretch the ends. So there. Okay, now, when you come down to your ends, see here, your grain of cloth wants to come in. Your grain of cloth wants to come in over here. So when we stick our ends, I like using my channel locks because I can hold it a lot easier because of my carpal tunnel in my hands. So, the first thing I'm doing when I'm stretching this way, I'm not going past my line, and I'm making sure my grain of cloth is straight. So I stick this corner. And I rub it out. Then I come over here, stretch in this direction and this direction to get my grain of cloth. Straight. You can see how it curves in here. See it? So now, I'm going to straighten out my grain of cloth. And rub it out. Now, let's go to this end and do the same thing with our two corners up here.
Straighten it out. Don't go past your line. Okay. Now, come back and pull the middle of your claw just straight back to the line. that there you go rub it out Now, we'll go back to the other end. Now we've got to pull this line to straight. And since that end is anchored, it's going to be a lot more difficult to pull. Okay. So we're going to walk this over. Rub it out. Right here. Here again, watch your line. Trimming your rail cloth off or the extra cloth. Okay, now, comes to finishing off your pockets. We started with this one first, so we're gonna cut out all this extra. Take your razor knife, cut straight down at the thickness of the slate. Cut this loose, like that. Then, because of this style, one, two, three shallow shell. 
straight up, back, down, under, under, under. Press them real good. Cut off your excess cloth. Now the side pockets, cut straight down, straight down. Then again, middle, split, split. Two middle flaps up, over, down, under, corner flap, corner flap. Rub it real good, cut your extra sticking out cloth off. See, nice and clean. And down here, we're cutting away the extra flap that we don't need. Cut, cut. Split, split in half, split in half. Up, pull, down, under, down and under, down and under. Make sure that they're stuck real good. Cut off your extra fold sticking out. down, cut down, find the middle, about the thickness of the slate, split, halfway in between, thickness of the slate, split, split, up, in, down, under. Make sure that they're stuck real good, stuck real good. You don't have to use duct tape or box tape or anything else to hold these flaps in place using my glue. It will not let you lose. Now, here's your side pocket. Remember, this is the one that had all the slack in it. See? In the middle, split, split. Up, out, down, under, stick, down and under stick, under stick, rub it real good, stick it real good, cut off any excess. Now we're at the last pocket. Cut. Cut, middle split, halfway split, halfway split. Okay? Again, two middle flaps up, out, down, under. This flap under, this flap under. Rub it real good, stick it real good. Cut. Cut. You're done. How long did that take? Less than 30 minutes.
Okay. Now, when you set the slate back in the cabinet, you have to make sure that the slate sets in the cabinet at the correct depth to match your rails, to match your frame of the table, and the, the, the formica cap. So come over here. See here, I take an adjustable square. I put it on top of the rail and I measure it to the bottom of the slate. Lock it in place. That's my total depth from the top of here, which matches here to the support brace, which is at the bottom of the slate. So now that you've got that locked in place, if you slide the slate out of the way and you take and you put this on here, you see that gap? Yeah, a little small gap here. Let me yeah, right there's your gap. Okay. You have to fill that gap in. If you don't fill the gap in, the slate is gonna sit down too low. Your rails, if you push them down to the surface of the slate, are gonna expose Formica. If you set the slate all the way down and you line your rail up with the, with the Formica so that you don't have this rubbing, you're gonna have a gap between the bottom of the rail and the slate which changes your nose height. So we need to shim everywhere that that slate is gonna set, we need to shim it up so that it doesn't set so far inside the cabinet of the table. Okay. okay, now what we're getting ready to do is drop the slate back in place. So JR, bring the camera around and pull this board out. Make sure all your slate screw, your rail bolt screws are out. Okay, ready? Pull the board. Center it side to side. Okay. And again, center it side to side. End to end. Looks pretty good. Now. Now 
When we put our rails back on, There's no gap between the slate and the rail. talk about the cloth backing yeah yeah there's no reason to have to trim the cloth being in the way of the rail bolt going in because it'll climb it'll cut right through the cloth it's a big mystique or myth that it'll get tangled in the cloth as long as, see here, that's not cut around. So I'm gonna show you now. You start one bolt. That bolt started. See? So this one here, the hole's covered, this hole's covered. All you have to do is make sure you line up straight to your hole. Make sure it stays loose. You don't tighten your bolts up till all three of them are started. Then you tighten them down. Now, there's no gaps anywhere underneath the rails. <laughs> 